people say you shouldn't have something making noise like this because it makes editing very hard. And unfortunately, that's going to be the case. So I'm going to stop this uh, pendulum clock from ticking a little bit. There we go. And now it will be easier to mask things in the edit. However, we have multiple clocks here showing the time. So whenever you see a time jump, that means I edited something. This is Mitzella's Precision Clock Mark IV. And Mitzella made a video on it. It's on YouTube right now. Uh, if you want to go watch it, that video doesn't have as many views as I think it should. And I hope that the YouTube algorithm will pick it up because this is not only the most expensive clock I own, but also the coolest clock I own. And for some people, you might already notice the reason why I'm saying that. For other people, you might be thinking, why are these two digits over here not changing? They're just eights. They're not eights. This is showing you milliseconds. And this is accurate time based on GPS time from satellites. And that's what this cable is going to. It goes to a cable that's in the front room because in the studio, the metal in here is making it so that GPS signals can't be received. I actually put another GPS antenna outside on an antenna mount, and I'm routing that to multiple clocks in my studio. When you get into the timing uh, hobby, the rabbit hole goes very deep. Uh, this is probably the most expensive thing I've ever bought with that has to do with timing. I have some equipment that's more expensive, but that was provided for testing, not things that I've purchased personally. Anyway, this clock has another party trick up its sleeve besides being an ISO timestamp. Uh, you can imagine that this is a T here, and then that's a whole timestamp. If you just fold it over, it turns into the date and the time. And there's also multiple modes. There's some buttons. Where did the buttons go? Uh, buttons right here. And you can click them to go through different types of uh, settings. So this is showing its Chicago uh, time zone, America, Chicago shows the offset, uh, and it can also go into some other modes. There's a timer mode, there's a bunch of settings. There's actually just a config.txt file. If you plug this into USB on your computer, you can change all the settings. This is not a commercial clock per se, uh, but there are batches of these that are made and you can get them. And it's just really cool. It's one person designed this thing and put all of these features into it. Like there's GPS, for the most accurate time that you're going to get outside of some of the most crazy time nuts uh, in existence. You have multiple thousands of dollars to spend on things. It has a little GPS module here that gets the antenna in, and you can see there's a blinking light. I don't know if you can see that in the video. I'll zoom in and see if I can see that uh, in the edit. But that is showing the PPS from the satellite. So every time that there's a second, this pulses to let this clock know exactly when the start of the second is, because GPS gives you the time and all that stuff, but it needs to also tell you exactly when that time happens. Otherwise, you can't be as accurate. And that's also why if you ever tune into uh, 10 megahertz or 15 megahertz, the WWV signals, it at the beginning of every minute, it says like, the minute will start at the sound of the tone. The tone sounds, and right when that sounds, that's when you set your time. So whenever you're setting an analog clock like this, you know, when I'm doing it on my watch, I'll watch like, it's 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and then I'll like set it for that time, and then it's, that's the closest you're going to get on one of these. This is an NTP clock that's getting its time over the network from my time server. Uh, but this clock here has a battery backup that also has uh, a, TX, a TCXO, a temperature compensated oscillator, that will keep the time uh, very accurately even when the GPS signal is lost. I have a clear GPS signal right now. That's not an issue. Uh, but there's just so much cool about this thing. I'm not going to cover everything in here because Mitzella already covers that in his video. Um, but he wanted to make it so that it could be a clapperboard. Apparently, some people that bought earlier versions of this kit uh, wanted to be able to do that, and you can. I wouldn't recommend doing that a lot because this has a lot of circuits and this, this little wire connection on the backside that's a little bit fragile. Um, but anyway, it's just there's so many cool little features of this. And you can tell that he's put a lot of time into every little design aspect. And uh, especially, so that the coolest thing about this, and something that is not that obvious, if you've ever done like electronics and uh, built little displays with these little segment, seven segment displays, uh, the way that the drivers work, it's not all digital with PWM for dimming. You might notice if I put my hand over here, it dims down a little bit. And if I let go, it, it brightens up. That dimming is analog. It's not a digital PWM signal. And that lets you do things like when it dims, if you're looking at it on a high-speed camera, these digits will still roll over accurately. So you'll see like one, two, three, four, five, with no gaps, no flashing, none of that kind of stuff. 
it's just those little touches that make this thing all that much more interesting. And the fact that, you know, on the back of it, there's a, a boot and reset uh, button that you can hold with your finger to get into different modes. You can reflash it and upgrade the firmware through USB. And uh, this was all designed in 2020, uh, 2018, 2019, 2020, before the pandemic. And so that, that's why it took four years to get from pandemic to actually printing out PCBs and, and making these things and getting the kits available. Uh, but it was also designed before the Raspberry Pi Pico was, was really a thing. So it's using an ARM, let's see what chip this is. Woo! It's using an ARM STM32L476 as the main uh, microcontroller. And on the other board, it has an ARM ST, uh, STM32L010. So it has two microcontrollers that it has to keep in sync to get the time correct across the whole thing. Uh, anyway, like I said, go check out Mitzella's video. He has a, a product a project page on his website too, as well as a, a, a guide for how it, how it works. And all of it is extremely enlightening and uh, really gets into the depth of how, how the PCB works, how the microcontrollers work, how the software works that he wrote for it, how the seven segment displays work, the dimming, the GPS, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a very, very cool write up. And I, I don't know. To me, that was one of my favorite videos of 2025, and uh, I just think that more people should see that video. That's partly why I'm making this one and just getting it up there quickly, so that more people can see that video through this video, and, uh, and also know a little bit more about the story behind this clock, which will be showing up more in some of my videos as I get more into GPS, timing, uh, clocks, oscillators, and all that kind of fun stuff. While I was editing the video, there were a couple things that I didn't mention that uh, it's just fascinating. There's, this clock has many layers to it, and I'm only going on the surface layer right now. Uh, but there was one thing I did want to talk about really quick before I close out this video, just something fun to think about uh, as we get to precision clock mark 5, 6, 7, etc. in the future. Um, if What would happen if you added more digits of precision? Uh, each one is going to add on a lot of complexity, in the circuit that uh, that updates the clock, in the microcontrollers themselves, and the fact that you need to pass the time across um, you know across board space and all that, as you get down into the nanosecond range, eventually when you have a lot more digits, uh, there's another interesting thing that will happen is when the digit shows a nanosecond on the screen, it takes about a nanosecond per foot. It's a little less than that, but about a nanosecond per foot. That's, uh, there's a measurement called the nanosecond meter uh, before the light gets to your eyeball. So at that point, would the clock have to start uh, like focusing on where you are in, in relationship to the clock and measure that distance and predict you know, when, the, when the digit will show on the screen so that it shows up here at your eyeball at the right time? I don't know. I mean, already with the GPS modules, you have to, if you want to get the most accurate time, you have to give it the length of your cable. Because even if you have a 10-foot cable, that's going to introduce some delay from where the antenna receives the signal and where the GPS module is. And if you have a computer with a lot of board traces and things, you have to deal with the centimeters of board traces between the GPS module and the rest of the thing. So anyway, it's timing is a rabbit hole. And uh, I have I've gone straight in the deep end, and I know about this much right now, and I can see that there's about a bazillion things more to learn. And uh, I don't know. I'm just uh, I'll, I'll take you along as much of the journey as I can. But I've been I've been messing with this stuff for two years now, and I've made like three videos about it. So at some point, I need to make some more videos to justify continuing to invest so much time and resources. But anyway, I I just thought this clock was so cool, and I wanted to share it with everyone. And I hope that the Mitzella's video gets a lot more views and that project gets a lot more uptake because things like that, it, it might not be the most practical thing, but it teaches you skills that you can use in your own field, whatever field that is, uh, because timing affects a lot of things that you wouldn't even think about, which I'll get into in some videos on the main channel uh, later this year and probably next year and who knows how many more in the future. Anyway, until next time, this is level two, Jeff, and uh, I'll see you soon.